Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are not on a river because I forgot to hit the record button when I filmed my intro in the last episode. So today we will be talking all about how to fish for smallmouth bass and rivers. So let's head back in time, back out onto the river that we were fishing last weekend. We're gonna give you a ton of tips on how to fish rivers for smallmouth bass. This was probably my most requested video on my page in my comments section. If there's anything else you'd like to see, leave a comment down below. I made a video on this one. If there's something else you'd like to see, I'll make a video on that as well. But for now, let's head out onto the river and let's start with our first tip in bait selection for what you need to be throwing out on the river for smallmouth bass. When it comes to bait selection for fishing rivers, I keep it fairly simple, but there's a lot of stuff that'll work. I like to throw two different categories of baits, reaction baits to find the fish. Then I'll switch to finesse baits once I find an area that is holding fish. For my reaction baits, I'll throw stuff like an Alabama rig, crank bait, swim bait. You can also use a fluke, a jerk bait, or even a topwater in the summertime. Um, and then when it comes to finesse baits, I keep it super simple on smallmouth. I use a Ned rig, a drop shot, and I use a jig sometimes, like a little finesse jig. That's about all I ever use finesse baits for smallmouth bass. Now that we talked about some of the baits that I like to throw while fishing rivers, let's talk about some of the areas that I'm actually gonna fish and target. While I'm looking for these, there's one, oh my gosh. Thing destroyed it. As Buddy interrupted us here, let's talk about some areas where you want to fish so that you can take your baits that we talked about and start catching fish just like that. We'll throw him back and hopefully there's some bigger ones down on this spot because this is a key area that I usually target when I'm fishing rivers. So what I have in front of me here is called a current break or a current seam. You've probably heard both those terms before, but if you're new to bass fishing, all that is is basically something that blocks the current in the river to create a soft spot where these fish can live. So essentially what I have up in front of me here is a rock pile and it'll be hard to see, but it starts right where these bushes start here. So I can see visually with my eyeballs, there's some like ripple on the water and then the current starts swirling around behind it. And that is where the rock pile starts. So where I just landed my cast is where the very beginning of this current seam is. And I'll slowly work my bait. Sh there's one. Oh my gosh, they're loaded. Um, I'll slowly work my bait down the current seam just like this. And when you find a productive one, usually has some bait or something like that. Oh, I spit it. Just like that, you'll actually start catching some fish just like I did there. So we'll keep cranking this current seam and see if we got any more that want to bite my crankbait down there. Just like that. We got another one. They are loaded. Oh, he came off too. Why do they keep coming off? So the reason that current seams are my number one place to target when I fish in a river is exactly what I just showed you right here. The fish stack up in them. It's a good place for them to get out of the current, but the food also lives there. So it's basically an all day, all you can eat buffet. They just sit there, wait for food to come to them and eat as much as they can. They get nice and fat and they don't have to put any effort into actually going to find food. So I will continue to keep bringing my bait down through here and I'll probably continue to keep catching fish because there's so many in there that it's hard not to get one to bite. You fire the school up just like that. That one came off. And once you get that school fired up, they'll pretty much eat anything because then they realize there's food in the area. Once one starts feeding, you can fire the whole school up and you'll really start tearing into them. That is why I like to start with reaction baits as well. Not only to help me find fish because there's a million current seams on a river that you could potentially fish. So it could take you forever if you decide to fish a drop shot or a Ned rig and all of them to find out which one's actually holding fish. Typically a reaction bait like this bright red crankbait here comes flying through there and just gets one to bite it. You don't have to have the whole school bite it. It doesn't have to be the best bait, but if you get one, to bite it in a current seam, you can go back through with multiple different baits and go through the rotation about the different baits we talked about at the beginning of this video and really start to catch some fish because then you know the fish are there and you can pick that area apart and really see what bait they actually prefer on that spot. Oh my gosh, that has to be a giant. That has to be. That, that was the hardest bite I have ever had. This thing destroyed it. Oh, come on, be big. And don't come off. Yeah, it's big. Wow. That was insane. Oh, 
<laughs> we might have found them, boys and girls. We just got to get this one in. Oh! Wow! I hope I just got that on camera. Gotcha! Look at that one. That is what happens when you find the right current seam and they're loaded in there. You end up getting a big girl like this. I mean, that is a tank of a smallmouth. We'll get a weight on her and see what she weighs. And obviously we're gonna get right back in that current seam and see if there's even more in there. I will continue to throw these moving baits in these current seams as long as these fish will let me because it's just too much fun. I'm not gonna lie, but getting them to destroy that crankbait like that, it's just too much fun. Yeah, that's the biggest one of the day so far. I'll probably throw some of the other baits we mentioned earlier today, like the Alabama rig or a swim bait or stuff like that. I'm definitely gonna toss those up in here at some point, but as long as they're eating this crankbait, I'm gonna keep throwing it until they stop and then I'll switch it up with something else to see if I can get that school to fire back up. That's another tip when you're fishing these current seams. If you're fishing them and all of a sudden the fish stop eating the bait, those fish didn't leave, they're still there. And there's probably still more. The nice part about rivers is that they do stack up so much. So if you find one that's a good current seam, it is usually always good or at least will be good for the entire day unless your current changes because the river does change so much. If the fish stop biting the bait that you're throwing, just switch it up and throw a different bait in there. And a lot of times if you can get that school to fire back up, you can continue throwing the bait that you switched to or you can switch to another bait or the one you just were throwing and throw it right back in there and they'll start biting again once you get them fired back up. So now, like I said, we'll fire another bait back in there and see if we can fire the school up again. All I'm gonna do is change colors. So I'm gonna go from a red crankbait to a shad pattern crankbait and see if that works. We'll do minor changes first and then we can go to a larger bait change if they won't commit. So since that didn't work, we're gonna try something totally different to see if we can get them fired back up. This being one of my favorite river baits ever. If you like the river fish for smallmouth, a 2.8 Kai Tech on just a quarter ounce ball head jig, probably the simplest lure ever made, but I'll tell you what, it'll catch you a ton of smallmouth. So we'll fish this down this current seam and see what happens here. Maybe we'll get one to commit. And the answer is yes. First, second cast. I won't lie, that was my second cast. But like I said, I threw that crankbait in there how many times they wouldn't commit to it and second cast in there with this swim bait and they immediately eat it. You just gotta throw the bait that they want and get them fired back up. Do you think he wanted that? I mean, that thing's gone. Down there thinking it's just a little bait fish, so we'll throw him back fire back up there and see if we can get another one. And if they start eating this swim bait, I'm gonna throw the A-Rig in there because I absolutely love the A-Rig in rivers. And now as a cleanup bait, we'll take a few casts with this Ned Rig and if it doesn't get bit, then what we'll probably do is start looking for another current seam. So what happens when you fish all those baits through that current seam and those fish really just stop biting entirely? That's when I go back to square one. I'll pick up a search bait again. In this case, we're gonna go back to the red crankbait. It's caught the biggest fish so far today. And all we'll do is we'll just start drifting downstream with the current. Anything that looks like a good current break, we'll fire our crankbait in there and hopefully get a couple bites. If not, we'll just start looking around to find any current break that we can find. And we'll just keep fishing them until we run into another pod of them, just like we did right there. There's one. He knocked slack in my line. He's just a little guy, but he's not that little. Come on, buddy. Jeez, calm down. This is how I find my fish in the rivers. I just keep running with a crankbait until I find good spots that look really good. There's a nice fish right there. We're gonna go ahead and throw him back. Same thing that I'm just talking about. So the average depth in this river is like 15 to 18 foot. And you can see right here, we're sitting in 13 and a half now, and it's even shallower up there. And I can see that current swirling again, just like we were talking about on that last spot. And it's just another current break. Almost every current break will have fish in it. It's just a matter of how many. So I'll roll my crankbait through here a couple more times and we'll see if this is a really loaded up current break like that other one, or if it just has one or two fish in it. Maybe they like a different bait on this one. Not every current break is gonna be the same. If you fish 
even on day-to-day -day basis if you fish that current break that's up there 100 yards away from this one and they're eating that red crankbait you could come down to this one you'll get one to eat it fires the school up but they only want the ned rig on this spot or whatever so you just have to play around with your bait selection in these current breaks and make sure you're just fishing your bait in a natural presentation that's all that matters with these river fish as long as you have a natural presentation pretty much any bait will catch fish out here they just want it to look like food that's all that matters to them they can tell when something's not right because of how the current works in these places so if you're fishing your crankbait down this current break and you're fishing it upstream bait doesn't swim upstream really really hard against strong current so if you're ripping a crankbait up there upstream at two miles an hour against this current it doesn't look right to them but if you're fishing it downstream like it's a dying bait fish and just slowly bouncing off the rocks the whole way down you're going to get a lot of bites doing that that's how you're going to catch more fish i always like to pull my baits downstream in current there we go got him that time Jig fish. So all I did was let that current seam rest a little bit. We went and looked at some other ones. Didn't find anything. Figured we'd stop back here on the way going to look for some other ones. We tried a different bait. We threw this little jig in there. A little secret weapon there. We're going to do a video on that real soon. So hit that subscribe button down below. Nice little smallmouth there. Not a giant, but we'll go ahead and throw her back. We had a couple other bites on that jig too. So we'll see if we can get some more out of this seam. There she goes. I hope you enjoyed today's video talking all about how to catch these fish in rivers. This was specifically during the fall, but a lot of these tips will apply all year round. Hopefully they will help you catch more fish on your rivers around your house. And if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like down below and make sure you comment what video you would like to see next. This was one of my most requested videos from comments. So if you want to see a video specifically, just leave it in the comments below and I'll make it. And if you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up.